Okay. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to ask uh, some questions of the students who actually did the experiment. So, Peter, um, where did you guys begin with the experiment? What was your f first few uh, steps in, your, uh, in the experiment? Tell me. First, we calculated theoretical values with numbers we were given from books and numbers. Values like for what? What kind of theoretical values for? Heat, heat transfer numbers. Stuff okay. From book Randall numbers, New Salt numbers, Reynolds numbers, all sorts of stuff that come come from people doing this stuff before. Okay, these are things you've heard in theory in class. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. What we actually get to do now is put it to use. Okay. So we start off here with our water here. Water comes from the ground. We have to filter it out. From the stuff we learned in class, there's impurities in regular water that come from the sewers or wherever from the ground. You have to filter these out before you actually get them into your pipes because they'll cause your numbers to change. Okay. So we filter both streams, this being the cold, this being the hot, goes into our water heater, loops back around, and then the cold and hot water meet on this board here that Brian's going to tell you about. Okay, so Brian, um, explain precisely what's happening on that board. Um, right before the board, actually, if you look back, we have valves three, four, five, and six. And what that allows us to do is change where the hot and cold water are actually flowing. I see. So the hot water enters on this tube here, and the cold water would enter on this tube here, depending on your setup over there. So what happens is your cold water will flow in and out down here, while your hot water will flow in and then out up here. And what it allows you to do is the first two things we have are flow meters. It allows you to see how much water is flowing through your system at any given point in time. And you're also allowed to adjust the valves to control how much that is. It's not just a set value. You can change it here and there. And then what, you're allowed, well, what you can do is with thermal couple 1, 2, 3, and 4, which is basically a fancy word for thermometer. Okay. With those electronic thermometers, you're allowed to read before and after readings. Before it gets to exchange heat, and then after it gets to exchange heat. It transfers through the coil, which you just saw us move. What on here is actually insulated to control the loss of heat to the environment. We want to make sure that we're optimizing from the cold into the hot fluid. Okay. And then, of course, this flows out into the drain system because it's just normal city water. So, Will, what a, so, how, um, so what is this um, copper structure I see in front of me? So this is actually the heat exchanger equipment you see. I see. It's similar to this one, but this one is covered in the insulation. This one is not in use. We don't have the insulation on it, which mm -hmm. protects it from losing heat to the environment. Okay. So we have four uh, valves over here. We have two inputs, one's on the top, one's on the bottom, and then we have two outputs, one's on the top, one's on the bottom. So the hot water flows in and goes up to here. The cold water flows in and goes down through here. And they, along this large surface area inside the tubes, the heat is transferred from the hot fluid to the cold fluid. So um, you did the experiment, you wrote a report, presented to the class. So what did you learn about uh, heat transfer in a few sentences? Well, as Peter said before, a lot of this, what we do is just learning theory from the books. Right. And what we were able to do with this is we correlated the theory to the actual readings. From our temperatures, we calculated the heat transfer between the hot and cold fluids, and we found that our theoretical numbers matched our, our experimental numbers within about 10%. So, Peter, is it helpful to learn the theory first, or um, was it all? It's helpful to know what you're doing, uh -huh. but at the same time, it's better when you actually get to see it to use. You can get a right answer on a test and know you have the right numbers, mm -hmm. but to know what those actual numbers mean and what they're doing is, is, is what we do in chemical okay. engineering. How close was your theory to the um, data you got from the experiment? We actually did a very good job, and we were 11% off the whole entire time. So our theoretical calculated numbers were within 11% of our actual data that we got. So that's pretty good. Basically, it's saying we did the experiment right. You're allowed to be off a little bit because they are theoretical numbers, but to actually have them 11%, that's, we feel like we did a good job. So Brian, what did, what did you learn from? Um, one thing I've learned is that it's actually the heat exchanging is really important. The reason you need to do it is it saves the company money in the long run. Um, you spend a lot of money, I mean, there, it takes money to run that tank over there. If you have to have hot water for a process, and then you have to have cold water for a process, it's nice to be able to take all the energy you put into a system and be able to recover and use as much so you get more bang for your buck, basically. Okay, well, one last question. Uh, you, I noticed that this is like a helix, right? Helical? Right. Yes. Uh, would, it, would the heat exchange system be, uh, would the amount of heat exchange be different if it were not coiled, but say linear? 
Yes. In the, um, in the theory? The helical coil actually does take manipulations of a linear, of a linear line. Um, so, so it's better? Explain linear. Is it better? It, Will this be better than linear, linear heat exchanger? It depends on what you mean by better. Um, better in space, yes. Okay. But better in heat transfer, it depends okay. on the flow itself. What we're not actually saying is this is a type of heat exchanger. This is just one of many. There's many different kinds okay. of heat exchangers for what you're trying to accomplish. This is an experimental school situation. This type of stuff probably isn't going to be used in industry, but it's just to show us that we can actually achieve a number that correlates to a theoretical calculated value. So it's putting our analytical skills to use with hands-on materials. All right. Sounds good.